Well, I wish all of our board members were here tonight. Uh, we have a, a few cards and things, but the teachers and, and the students, we very much appreciate this job. We know it's sometimes a thankless job, and the pay's not great. Um, and you guys spend a lot of hours um, doing the things that boards do and taking some heat sometimes in the community. So Miss Kay will kind of take the lead on this, and I'm going to bring them in. They wanted to kind of jazz up school board appreciation uh, instead of just cards. They have a presentation for you that they've been working on for quite a while, and they're very excited to bring it to you. We have some great kids that are going to come on in with Miss Kay Hill. Miss Carly's fifth grade class, and I'm here to tell you how much we appreciate you. My name is Catherine Harris. My name is Josiah Mosley. My name is Trevor Mealy. Our first card is from Trent McNeely, Haley Callahan, and Sunny Schools. Two, two school board members. We appreciate you guys very much. Thank you for all that you have done. We are very thankful for all of you. This school would not be the same without you guys. We all love our school because of everything you do, and all the improvements are great. We all are very happy to have you. We would love for you guys to come to our classroom and visit sometime. Our next card is from Emma Holbride, Bryson Wright, and Thank you for all that you do for our school. We are lucky to have you as our board to support our school. Thank you, you rock. Our school wouldn't be the same without the school board. Everything you do supports our lives and helps us grow. Our next card is from Madison Garner, Brayden Wright, Gary Dow, and Michael Weber. We appreciate you because you help our, our education and you help make school fun. Learn! Thank, Thank you. you. Our next card is from Bronson, Sky, and Catherine. Thank you for your time. We tried to make this rhyme. Thanks for your consideration. It may not be effective to the nation, but it helps our school so much. You guys add the final touch. We fifth grade know that you try and care to make us successful everywhere. Visit us in fifth grade, Miss Kylie's fifth grade class. This is from Daniel Moss, Andrew Greer, Kimberly Crockett, and Austin Bear. 
The school board rocks. <laughs> I am Josiah Mosley and I wrote this song to make you guys feel appreciated and just I want you guys to know how um how helpful it is to have you guys be our school board members. Here it goes. Kicked out two things in my life choir lessons and tennis lessons. So at uh, 3.1, approval amendment of meeting agenda. Uh, the agenda is, I moved to approve four meeting items for June 23rd, 2029. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. We moved that date a lot, so that one got me. We moved to approve four meeting items for January 29th, 2020, as presented. Second. Okay. All those in favor? I mean, I'm going to see it until the end. It's not until March 11th. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Very much better. Yeah, that's okay, approval of minutes. I move to approve the minutes of the January 8th, 2020, as president. It's been moved and seconded to approve the meeting minutes of January 8th. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, correspondence. I have with Mr. Chair. Public comment. Hopefully, we have any help with you. We have one. Uh, Mr. one. Uh, Chair, I appreciate you allowing me to stand up for a second. Um, I noticed on your agenda that you're going to be accepting the resignation of, of Mr. Cahill, and you're going. Would you, going to, yeah, would you like to? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Guess it's your fault. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, you're going to, you know, open up his uh, uh, his position. Um, I just wanted to let the board know how much I definitely appreciate Mr. Cahill. Um, I've worked very closely with him for the last three years. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure, and uh, you are losing a, a true champion for education. Um, and hopefully, he will keep his finger in in the, in the business um, as much as we can possibly pry out of him. Uh, but I just wanted you guys to let you know that uh, you've got. Big boots to fill, uh, and it's been a, a real pleasure to work with. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. It's an honor to be Thank you. Yeah. Convince us that maybe we won't vote in favor of this. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> 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 
The boot size is like triple E. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay, any other votes from I can see. Uh, reports. And I'm pleased to welcome Mr. Stratton, Ms. Mize, and report here for ASP. So, have at it. So the LSU Student Council and Leadership Class have been very busy the last couple of months as usual. We have 16 student council members plus two more to make up the entire leadership class. We decide on and set our projects at the beginning of each month, month and then make them happen. In December, we did our yearly door decorating where each student signed up to decorate a teacher's door. Although they wouldn't stay up, we were, de were determined to keep them up until Christmas break. Next, we decorated a school spirit wreath to be shown at the Tree of Lights Festival. We also got two Christmas trees and decorated them for the school. One was in the senior hallway and the other was in the front hallway near the TV. Since this was a season of kindness, we had a 13 days of kindness poster which was posted in the front hallway. It gave students ideas on how to show kindness. In December, we started selling punch cards that would earn prizes as an incentive for students to attend home sporting events and the band and choir concert. Um, we punch the cards when we attend the event, and then in February, we will give out the prizes. So far, Josh Rose is doing great. Um, also, throughout December and January, the leadership class was assigned to a community service assignment to commit five hours to. Our projects were approved by Mrs. Mice. And some people did things like volunteer at the Lakeview Gardens, create a raffle for Animal House, uh, shovel snow, bake cookies, gather money for care packages for our troops, and even work to clean, clean up our little league fields, which will be done in the spring. For the upcoming months, we are staying busy. The senior class officers are on top of senior events for later this spring, and the junior officers are working on prom. We are also doing a safety stance with thing out of this world, so we can have just up days a week of the dance. We are preparing our senior versus staff basketball game, but we have, a, we have a cake auction in addition to the exponential exponential sports shown by the staff. As usual, we will continue our sport and club locker signings for the spring groups. Not only do we have all of that going on in the month of February, we will have we will take Valentine pictures for students with our new green screen and selfie printer. Plus, we are plating a t-shirt design contest to create a new and improved Honker shirt for students, um, a Honker Rewind, which will be a recap, a video on YouTube, and a compliment wall. The next couple of months will be very busy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. I can answer questions in that. What is her name? <laughs> Liz Lopez. OK, so that's for our ASB reports. Uh, I suppose you can Draw straws or decide who wants to go first. So it's up to you. As always, ladies first. Mr. You're Stratton, such a nice guy that way. I want you guys to recognize. He always, always lets me go we first. He's it. always ladies first. We see it. Very well, we nice see guy. How high a bar you're setting? <laughs> not very tonight. Not very. For the presentation there. <laughs> yes, the kids shine. Let, let, let's just we build the kids up. Administration not always so much. Yeah. Um, I wanted to give you an update. I've, I've yacked at you quite a bit about um, the class sizes over there. And originally, our uh, beginning of the school year, we took in 70 new students, but we lost 30-ish, somewhere between 25 and 30. Normally, we gain 25 or 30, lose 15, kind of somewhere in those ranges. But we gained 70, and then we gained another eight after seven or eight after Christmas break, and another three this week, um, with one... Um, high need student coming in in the next couple of weeks. So we are really scrambling. And, and those of you that went on that tour the other day, we kind of talked through uh, how squished we are different places. Are these people moving to the community or? Mm -hmm. And do we know, I guess that feeds in the question yeah, I was going to ask is. Just people you know, decided to finally put the way it's in school. Do we know what's <laughs> bringing them here? I mean, is it like Red Rock, all of a sudden mm -hmm. the influx of Red Rock? It's not, we it's haven't just, seen a huge influx. From Red Rock, a few a few people, um, and then we have a few people that have told us that they are just leaving the <coughs> more urban areas of California and moving up here to a smaller town. But the it, the, the reasons are all over the map, pretty much. Um, let's see, we so we completed all of our uh, teacher and parapro training for Smarter Balance. I think we just got a couple people that left the elementary school, so we're in good shape that way to start testing. But one of our challenges was we pulled all our computer labs. 
So we needed to be able to test with Chromebook labs, with mobile cards, which include headphones. And then what do you do with the keyboarding piece of it for writing? And so we've got headphones and uh, a mouse order for the Chromebook labs that need them and those kinds of things. And those are all good, ready to go. Uh, we recently hired Kelly Hatman as a paraprofessional. She's replacing Leslie Arcularius, who moved to the library manager position with the, with, um, the resignation of Joanne Dixon. And so everybody's moved around a little bit in those areas, but we're, we're getting settled back down. Uh, when the kids come back from winter break, we do easy CVM testing as our winter benchmark. And we met last week in intervention meetings. We meet by grade level to talk about the data that we collect from those kids, their test scores in reading and math, and then move them into different interventions. Some of them, the intervention they're in is no longer appropriate or they need a different kind of remedial skill at that point. Uh, we wanted to welcome um, Carmen and Aubrey Comstock. Carmen's one of our paraprofessionals and they had a baby last week. She's on our staff and we're excited. A little bit early, yes. Um, uh, Jan and just a few dates for you guys because all of our dates for cal is on our calendars, our school calendars. You just go to the website, pull down the school you want to look at, the elementary level. January 30th is the Union Student of the Month Assembly, January 31st, uh, Fremont, and the APBIS Assembly and, and Recognition. February 10th is Union Parents Club. Uh, February 19th is a writing workshop for our primary teachers that actually one of our substitute teachers is putting on. Uh, and then February 20th, our music teachers got together and they have a children's symphony up in Bend and they'll be taking our fifth graders up to the children's symphony in Bend. A little bit of a late night, but a pretty neat experience for our students. We'll be using enrichment dollars to help them out. Uh, Chalice Young and her LHS peers, uh, peer kiddos are having activities, after school activities for kinder and first graders. They do one grade level one month, one grade level the next month, and they come down and use one of our classrooms and help them with an activity. I think this week's snowflake was snowflakes was their thing for their activity. And then uh, they also come down, we have multiple high school students that come down on a regular basis as part of a class for peer tutors and help in classrooms, but we also have a breakfast buddies program that Chalice runs and she um, has the kids go through a little bit of a training and they come in and they sit and visit with the kids and kind of start the day off right, sitting there while they eat their breakfast. And those kids are to school earlier than everybody but zero period, so it's a little bit of dedication on their part. Um, we're working with Scott Langham as the city council representative to find a solution for closing I Street. We've met with maintenance, Ms. Mills, Ms. Mr. Cahill, um, to look at our options. We think we've come up with a solution that doesn't permanently close I Street, but um, gives us the pedestrian traffic control that we need on that, and that's in the works right now. I think that's all I have, if you guys have any questions for me. So that would be able to close that during essentially business hours plus... So hours. what Scott came up with, Dustin, was um, man gates that are cyclone, and then also swinging gates that are cyclone, so that we don't have anybody coming underneath them. And they would swing shut, and then um, they'd be about that high off the ground, so we wouldn't have to deal with the snow issue. They'd be able to swing regardless of the snow. but But... They wouldn't be uh, they wouldn't be high enough that you could easily get underneath them as far as pedestrian traffic but then we can open all that up when we choose to and then we would um, work with the barricades in front to um, allow for deliveries but those kids the post that comes off right where kind of i park there um, or mr lemon parks that post right there on the hay playground that's where the gate would come across to fremont and then we'd make an opening in the Fremont playground and a walkway for those kids to come and cross every day be behind that cyclone and then leave that front part just a little bit more open. Then they would go through the hay playground and kind of come around the corner where that those arm gates are and they would come into the school that way. And so we'd really have some control over that then and be able to shut that down. That's the easiest, most cost effective solution we could come up with to shut the pedestrian traffic down. Of course, the gates will go across the entire width of the street. Mm -hmm. And so, looking at the, down the road, I mean, we constantly talk school security that's going to meet all needs from not just keeping our kids in, but keeping people out and you know, school threat scenarios and so on. Or With those lower cyclone fences, I don't think that the lower cyclone fences then become more of an issue because these cyclone gates will be higher. Um, but it's something we could build upon. It is something that we could certainly build upon and start just doing a chunk <clears> at <throat> a time of doing 
higher perimeter fencing if we could, you know, as we did. But I really like that we can shut down all that uh, pedestrian traffic. And then I'll, and then if we go ahead and gate the rest of all the playgrounds, we'll put a couple of gates up um, different places, and then they'll only be open during release times. Like the low one over there at Fremont where the parents drop off, that can be open during drop off pickup time, but it doesn't need to be open in the other time. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, Lakeview High School, Denny Middle School, um, Ag Willie Shop, Small Engine Shops, a lot of worker bees going over there. Um, hoping that it's uh, operable here next week. Actually, I have an update if you don't mind. Right on. Interrupting. Um, I had a call from Judy in my work session. Um, so, in my come apart on Monday, um, we should be a final tomorrow. They'll be over here for a final on Modoc's side. Holy was here today, should be about ready to roll with them as far as the gases plumbing, the geothermal plumbing piece of that going in there. It'll probably take them through till tomorrow um, to hook all of that up. Um, basically the long and the short of it was Monday I said Friday, this Friday was the day they had to be done. So they really worked their tails off finally to get to that point. Um, and so if we can get that final tomorrow from Ken, which I think we will, um, they'll be operational by Monday and in the classroom. That's pretty, pretty good news for us. would like to say thank you to Janet's crew, the maintenance guys, and the custodians with snow removal, our last bit of snow, and also um, Miss Amy Albertson's um, six and seven period work crew. They've been shoveling the sidewalks. Um, so it helped out um, during that time. So appreciate that bunch there. Um, FFA, last night the FFA had six students, four seniors and I believe two juniors who um, applied for their state degrees and that went really cool. So excited for those six students. Um, there are two students today that went over to Lost River High School for proficiencies. And I think we have a good chance of two for sure, possibly one, making it to the state level. Both of our students, their proficiencies are um, amazing and uh, extensive. So it sounds like we might be um, taking some stuff to the state level and, and competing with a good chance of bringing some hardware home there too. Um, I didn't shoot Mrs. Reese a text, but I'll find out that tomorrow. Um, spring semester has started this week. Um, kids are getting after it. And we had, last week we had finals and flu. It's a great time um, where I, I don't even know the exact numbers. It, it was around 30 per day there for about two weeks where we had students out with colds and or flu. Um, and it was hit or miss. So we have a lot of incompletes, probably more incompletes than I've ever seen. Um, with an incomplete at the high school level, they're given 10 school days to make that up. And we've had communications with those students. Uh, Ms. Harris and I will check on Friday with any teachers that have struggled to make arrangements to make up those grades, whether it was a final or a final project. Um, but we're working diligent and take that, get that taken care of. In that 10 days, is that our self-imposed? Yeah, it's, it's kind of that's how we have it in the handbook policy. I do have the right to extend it under ex circumstances. But 10 days is usually, that's the incomplete, incompletes go to an F. There's a chance if we have to, I can do a grade change. But if, if they're there, we want that 10 day done so we can move on and get to the next. You know, that stuff is going through our home and it's uh, getting over it within 10 days. It's tough in its yeah. own right to be but, able to do that. And, so, if, and if you have anywhere from three to six finals to make up, it, we're mainly asking for communication between students and teachers and then, then both parties get to us if we need to do more. Uh, teacher resignations. I had a uh, funny thing. I had two teachers resignations during the school year this year and then 25 years. I don't know if I've ever had one or been in a building where one's happened. Um, so you'll be approving one again today where a teacher's going to quit while the school year's back on. Um, 
I will be filling that position with a long-term sub or subs, hopefully a sub. Um, and that will be seventh grade English and freshman English um, on that. Um, also lost uh, our Spanish teacher. But that's actually, for me, it's a good lose because his experience here with our staff and especially our students in our community, uh, Mr. Bishop has decided to pursue the education career field. It's going to go back to Madrid, and he is going to be working on his teacher certification at a college in Madrid at the same time teaching English as a second language to African refugees and maybe also teaching Spanish to them. But anyways, but he plans on becoming a teacher my fingers. Maybe if we have an opening coming back here, because I thought he did a great job. I'd love to have him back. Um, interim tests. We've, we've done some interim tests, so they're like um, sub-tests out of the Smarter Balance test. Um, Mrs. Smith has been using them and getting some great results. Results and excited about that because it lets the kiddos see the Smarter Balance test type questions and use the tool, specifically using the tool, learning how to use the laptop or computer the tools on that before they take the big bad boy here in a couple weeks so I'm excited about that. We have started standardized testing mainly in, in science right now but also just mainly with our special ed students but we are about ready to get after it, just like the elementary school is. It's testing time. Uh, Mrs. Leah White had an art show. Most importantly so excited that the art show is back not the size of Mr. Hember, Mr. Hickman Dimbrook, but it's exciting that we did have an art show and we are making plans to make it bigger and moving it to a different location. Um, my hat's off to Mrs. White. I'm putting it on. It was a great opportunity to see kids um, show off their skills and talents where they normally don't get to. Um, had a good showing from the public. People came to it and, um, and she brought in some artwork from other classes, not just hers. So I was excited about that. Um, and I think it's still up. If you want to make a run over to the school tomorrow, you might walk through the library. And that's it from the high school piece. I got the athletics next. Uh, Mr. Rose is currently, we have middle school basketball going on today and JV basketball. So right now, Mr. Rose's report, middle school girls basketball is over. Very successful season for both the 7th and 8th grade teams. Um, 8th graders finished with eight student athletes and the seventh graders I believe they had 17 student athletes a large athletic group that seventh grade group seventh and eighth grade boys are currently playing today they've had three games um, our seventh grade boys will travel to Modoc and take part in their Friday Saturday tournament pretty excited about that getting some extra games middle school track the uh, middle school track will start after spring break high school track um, some of them have been working with Coach Howard already, running in the hallways and on the track when weather permits. Um, and Coach Stinger has a full schedule for track. Uh, I'll get to baseball and softball in a minute. Boys and girls basketball re reach halfway um, on league this Friday when they play Glide. They will restart the second round of league on Saturday playing Lost River. Um, we've had a handful of reschedules due to weather cancellations. We'll try our best to keep everyone informed and limit travel as best we can at the same time, get the games in where everybody has open gym space and referees. Both boys and girls varsity teams are about middle of the pack, but really needs to get some big wins this week to stay in the race. JV teams are doing well. They're playing Crane in a non-leaguer, which I'm excited. Again, to get our JV teams some games, we'll actually travel to Crane and play them. So home away agreement. I'm excited about keeping that um, connection. Our middle school girls also have gone over and played Crane. They came last year. We went this year. So we're making some connections with some schools um, to get some some different looks and some more games. Uh, district playoffs for basketball start February 17th. If we make it with the tentative round one game scheduled February 19th. Um, state is February 22nd. The senior recognition game will be Friday, February 14th. Wrestlers. Wrestlers are doing awesome. They're kicking butt. Um, they went to the Rogue River Tournament two weeks ago with four wrestlers. They placed fourth with three first and one second, which is four wrestlers at a tournament. And it was a good tournament. The teams, that was a quality team tournament. Um, they're working really hard. They took a week off due to flu and did not wrestle 
last weekend we we canceled we just didn't go we had two wrestlers he helping we decided not to go um they're at henley tonight in a duel and then they go they leave friday and wrestle up in hepner another really strong 2a style tournament get to see some good opponents in our league and then they'll take a couple days off and then roll into districts which is february 15th at north lake and then state is february 28th and 29th in portland Baseball, softball, we have now filled both um, coaching positions for baseball and both coaching positions for softball. Amanda Arculares, our JV coach, and Sam Takini, our varsity coach for softball. And at home, uh, Mr. Rose Wrights brings a lot of enthusiasm, and they're excited to get that team up and going and hopefully carry on from last year's success. Nick Wilkins is our new JV boys baseball coach with approval of the day and coach Murphy Cockrell who is currently our JV girls basketball coach um, they'll be our baseball coach um, both teams will have an overnight trip this season softball will play last year's champion 2A 1A North Douglas team over spring break as well as the top 10 Central Lent team they'll stay overnight on the I-5 corridor to play these teams on a Friday Saturday which I think is good for our JVs to or not our JVs excuse me our softball team to go travel and play some high quality teams at the start of the season. And then our baseball team will finish the um, grant, will attend the Grant Union Tournament, which is always a great tournament. They've always got high quality teams there. And that will be the three days prior to spring break. And then they'll, and they are set to face Homedale, Crook County, and Culver in that tournament. Uh, spring sports start March 16th. That's the first day for spring sport practice. And just a heads up that there is an ad hoc committee. Mr. Rose attended it for football, and they're looking to change to a football to a nine-man um, contest. And it's still in a proposal piece. I forget when they actually vote on that. Um, whether or not that happens, you probably will see some changes to our league, and it's um, not favorable as far as travel goes for Lakeview Hawkers. But there's the travel's not very good for Lakeview Hawkers. It, well, yes. What it does is it will keep us from buying worms and keep us from buying load up because they're a if, man unless they. If we go nine man, it's going to make it hard. And Mr. Rose said, well, can't we just play up for that week? And I said, that's probably not tactically good because you want to focus on nine and you don't want to take a week off and focus on them and go back and forth. Um, We'll have a lot of soul searching to do between now and when this proposal is approved and decide what's best for so us. So is this um, statewide two-way? Yeah. So then you have to decide whether you want to go in <coughs> do you want to play up. So they're looking at getting rid of eight man. We're going with six, nine, and eleven. So hmm. hopefully one A, some one A's will come up to nine, some will stay at six. And then the three up will be eleven. Yeah, um, there's some talk too about eight man. Okay. So I don't. I, I right now I think there's a lot up in the air, and the hard part is is we're right in the middle of one way or the other. Okay. And that's all I got for LHS DMS School and Athletics. Any questions? If Mr. Shetley, you need to escape and go to the games. I was going to stay for the um, next report in case oh, there's any oh. questions on the next report. <laughs> yeah, we have one quick question. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I know we've been struggling on the welding lab in uh -huh. our room for uh -huh. a year now. So there's been several iterations of classes coming through there and that hasn't been able to take full advantage of the welding facilities in the last year. Yes. Um, has there been any thought about a uh, extracurricular welding that where they could take their knowledge that they've had in the classroom and haven't been able to put it into practical and maybe we can look at a stipend for somebody to teach them outside of the classroom just so they can get their hands on doing some welding so you're saying like have a uh, after school welding class something like that uh, just for those who have been through the last year and just haven't been able to get much hands-on opportunity. Uh, 
I thought about a few things. I think most importantly right now, I haven't talked with Mr. Bickerman as much as I talked with Mrs. Reese, but right now I would like to get the, the welding lab put together um, and up and running prior to inviting someone else or doing something right now. Um, and I, I hate to say I'm speaking for Mrs. Reese and Mr. Vickerman, but right now Mrs. Reese's plate is full with FFA besides her homework classes. And Mr. Vickerman with coaching and uh, a new baby on the way. I don't know if I'd use one of them, but I, I think if we right now I have brand new welders and um, I have a very expensive plasma cutter that I need to hook up and put. And before I want to put somebody in there, I want to make sure that we understand and know how to properly use that lab. And so I'd be hesitant on opening up to somebody outside of the school district right now. I think um, I guess we just throw it as a, put a seed out there that if there's an opportunity or uh, looks like we need to do that just to, so those kids feel like they have that opportunity for just a little bit more. And I think one thing that we may look at is maybe offering uh, an additional course next year would be possible. I don't know about this year right now. I'm not going to make any promises, Mr. Gus Davison, but we can see. I know that there is, um, in the past, the 4-H has done some welding in that lab, um, but at the same time, right now, we currently don't have a storage area or place for our stuff, let alone having 4-H come in and bring bring in theirs and then again the new equipment so um, I'm open to something but right now I want to get I want to get the lab up and running get my own teachers comfortable and familiar with what's going on before I bring in anyone else and I think that's fair to them good yes the only thing quickly are we um, going to start advertising for a Spanish oh, I forgot to tell you that sorry it's here. I must have skipped over that. I am currently registered in three um, teacher job fairs. So I've registered for the Eastern Oregon Job Fair, registered for the Southern Oregon Job Fair, and the Bend Redmond Job Fair. So I have been, Lake County School District has a spot at all three of those job fairs. Okay. Um, we have made contact with, um, what's the Christian school just across in Redding, California. There's a college there. Simpson. 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 And they have a job fair, a teacher job fair. It's about like 50 teachers, but we're thinking it might be worth it to go there. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't decided yet if we're going to do the Portland job fair because usually it's where's Lakeview and they think it's Lake Oswego. <laughs> and then we show them and it, they think it's it, in yes, Washington. it doesn't work out too well. Um, also, or or explain what you know, maybe you should just take them. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next one is the next one is the Spokane Job Fair or Utah State, but um, the Spanish teacher job was posted. It's on. It's still. It's on. It's five days in house. Will go public. I think it's the thirtieth. Yeah. And so okay. I'm. So and then I'm assuming that we'll do a new English teacher in this. It's posted. Also. It, it, the new English teacher is already public. posted. It's public. Okay, and then um, we have a math position that we will be will be will be out there, right? Will be um, posted in house tomorrow. Okay, and maybe even south. Cost of living south is just through the roof. Uh, I tried Reno, uh, the new superintendent, or what do you call the head of a ed department in a college? Dean, dean of the ed department at Reno UNR. Um, shut their educa teacher education job fair because it wasn't in his eyes fulfilling the needs and he wants to come up with something different but they have yet to put something different together um, I haven't looked further south than that thank you I do have I do have a chunk of money to travel for teacher job fairs that I budgeted for so I am looking at either Spokane possibly or Utah State um, I don't know if there's anything in Idaho. Um, usually, the Idaho people either go to Spokane or Utah State. Boise State has one, I believe. Mm -hmm. but, Boise State. but we it's haven't just... had very good returns on that. Or... So I, I'm going to try um, <laughs> jumping on a big one. I'm not a big fan of traveling, but I also know that I need to recruit. So. 
Yeah. Thanks for asking that question because I wanted to talk about that. Thanks. We are on 7.4. All right, everybody, I'm going to take you back in time. Is it me? <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to do um, To last year and present our state assessment results to you all. I'm going to go over um, the key pieces of data for state assessment that show up on the school report cards and then through some extra stuff just. Um, the results by grade level for how many students pass the test and some trend data for you guys too. So we'll start with language arts. The first thing that shows up on the uh, report card for state assessment is participation. They want us to meet a target of 94.5% participation. As you can see, we have a great um, participation rate in our district. All of our um, schools were at 100%. Um, the high school, I did have one student opt out. Parents can opt their students out of the state test for any reason, so it's kind of a tricky target. We don't really have a lot of control over it, but we are doing well. Um, now we're going to talk about unions, English language arts results. Um, one thing that will show up on the report card is academic growth. They'll rate a school on academic growth using student growth percentiles, and then they come up with a median for all of the students in the school. And they'll give the school a one through five rating. The goal is the level five, which would be the best, um, and that's 60% right now. So this is all grade levels at Union. Um, academic growth for the past three years, and then a three-year average. You can see they had a significant amount of growth between 16, 17, and 17, 18. It more than doubled. Um, there was a 20% drop last year, and they got a level three out of five rating based on the three-year average. Usually what they'll do is um, use the 18, 19 results or the three-year average, whichever is higher. But since Union has such small class sizes, they always use the three-year average for a school this size when they're doing academic growth only. Um, also on the report card for all grade levels will be academic achievement, so how many students um, pass the assessment. So we have the past four years and a three-year average. For academic achievement, you're also rated um, a level one through five. Um, the goal would be the level five, which would be 80% proficient. You can see proficiency increased considerably for three years at Union. They kind of leveled off. They were rated a level four out of five based on their 18-19 results, which were 72.7% proficient. So they're more than 20% above the state average. They're doing great. Uh, then I also pulled from ODE's website um, results by grade level. Since these classes are so small, ODE actually doesn't report anything for three of these grade levels, so I pulled the numbers from my testing system for you just so you could see them, um, but I did put unofficial data on there because this didn't come from ODE's website on those three bars. Um, you can see fourth and fifth grade met the level five goal of 80%. Sixth grade was almost there. They just needed one more passing score and they would have been at 100%. Of course, there are only three kids. Um, higher than the state average, which was 51%. Um, third didn't quite get there, but again, we're looking at a, a five student class here. And then I pulled some trend data for you so we can look at it by cohort and follow a group um, through their testing years. We don't have third grade because they've only tested one year, but we can start with fourth grade. You can see they're a real high achieving group and they've had 100% proficiency for their two years of testing, which is fantastic. The fifth grade group had a steady increase over the last three years with a 10% increase last year. And the sixth grade group had a small drop between third and fourth grade, but a steady increase over the last three years. So when you look at these cohorts, you can see they've, they've either maintained or increased proficiency for the last two years, and they're all above the state average of 51%. I have a quick question. Yeah. And this is probably for Susan. Out at Union, what ballpark, roughly, uh, percentage of kids that start Union in third grade go to fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, and Union? I would say 95% or above are in third, fourth, fifth. And then it would drop to about 60 or 70 percent because some of them do come to town in that sixth grade year. But um, gosh, I think there were two last year. Sometimes it's, it's so and none did this year. So, so there's only three sixth graders? Is this is last year. Last oh, last year. year. Yeah, so this would be 18, 19. So when they tested, there were How many are there this year? Um, there's about there's seven. So they're all there's a little for they, sixth grade well they didn't have anybody come to town this next this last year I think Matt came here before so but it just kind of depends third fourth fifth actually second third fourth fifth are pretty consistent for your cohorts so I guess that was my point is that union that you probably are capturing that cohort better than in most schools oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. 
I also pulled it for you by grade level, so we're looking at different groups of kids here, um, but the grade level over time. Um, third grade did have a decline this year, but they've been pretty consistent in years past. Fourth grade had large gains in proficiency at that grade level over the last three years. Fifth grade, you're kind of seeing the same thing. Again, large gains in proficiency over four years. Sixth grade is a tough one because there's a real lack of data from ODE in those first years because of the size of that class. But you can see we have data for the last two years, and they also had an increase in proficiency during that time. So with the exception of the third grade level, all of, the, all of them are showing a trend of increased performance in the way. That's what I have for Union, and then we'll go to Fremont. So they also get rated on academic growth on the report card. Um, there was a slight drop between 16, 17, and 17, 18, and a slight increase in 18, 19. They got the same rating as Union, a level three out of five. Um, they only needed um, 55 to go to a level four, so they were really close. Academic achievement, um, proficiency is maintained over the last three years. So they're performing at the state average, which is 51% right now. They were rated a level two out of five on the three year average. Um, they needed a score of 54 to move to a level three, so they were really close to that too. These are those scores broken out by grade level for you. Uh, fourth and sixth performing very similarly. Both are slightly above the state average, which is 51%. Um, third and fifth were below the state average. Then we go to cohort. Um, for a fourth grade group, they had just a tiny amount of growth, about 1% in their two years. Uh, fifth grade maintained proficiency for the first two years and dropped by roughly 5%, which isn't a huge amount, um, but it did bring them just slightly below the state average. And then sixth grade had their highest performing year and reversed a previous trend of small amounts of decreased proficiency. So all of these um, cohorts are within 7% of last year's scores. Um, so we're looking at slight drops in gains here. So overall, I would say they're basically maintaining their proficiency levels. Um, we can look at it by grade level. Third grade had a decline this year, but it's been pretty consistent in years past, which is similar to the third grade report, um, third grade level report at Union. Fourth grade has been in the 50th percentile for the last five years, so again, pretty consistent results. Fifth grade um, had a spike in 15-16, but then was in the 40th percentile for the last three years, so again, consistent results. And sixth grade has been in the 50th percentile for the last four years. So other than last year's third grade group, um, the trend is maintaining performance in the 40th to 50th percentile. That brings us to the middle school kids. So academic growth for middle school, um, they've shown steady growth over the last three years. Um, they got a level four out of five rating based on their 18-19 results, which were 58%, and they only needed to bump up 2% and they would have got to level five, so they were super close. So good growth there. Mm. Academic achievement, they've had an increase in proficiency over the last three years. They're performing above the state average, which for middle school is 55%. Um, they got a level three out of five rating based on the 18-19 results. Um, they only needed to get a 62 to bump up to a level four, so they were close there as well. Um, by grade level, you can see the seventh and eighth graders are performing similarly. There was a five and a half percent difference between their proficiency results. Eighth grade is at the state average of 55 percent, and seventh is slightly above. Here's that seventh grade group. Um, they had their highest performing year last year, um, steady increase over the last three years. Eighth grade was up and down a little bit over the last four years. They had a 15% decline last year, but um, they're at the state average, which is 55%. So <clears throat> when you look at both these groups, they both had their lowest performance in 16, 17, and both had their highest performing year when they were seventh years. Um, by grade level, the seventh grade is kind of all over the place, um, but they did have their highest levels of performance in the last two years. And then you look at the eighth grade, other than that 17-18 group, they've been performing pretty similarly over the remaining four years within 10%. Which brings us to the high school. 
Um, don't do academic growth at the high school level because we don't have consecutive years of testing. They'll test in eighth grade, and then they won't test again until the 11th grade. So they just show academic achievement on the high school report card. Um, so this is just the 11th grade. They have their highest performing year last year at 88.4% proficient, which is fantastic. It was a 23.6% increase from last year. And before that, they maintained it around 65% for two years. Met the state goal of 80%, which scored them a level 5 out of 5. Great. <clears throat> and then we can only look at trend data by grade level since we don't have those consecutive years of testing. But you can see the 11th grade had a steady decrease in their first three years, but an increase over the last two years. And similar results in 14-15 and 18-19. Which will bring us to math, if it's okay if I keep going. Um, participation for math, again, we did really great. I did have one middle school student opt out of math as well. Um, that same student took the ELA test, though, so 100% there. But um, we met our target for every school. Union's math results, um, this is academic growth again. Um, there was a decrease in growth over the last three years, but we were still at the state goal of 60% in 16, 17, and 17, 18. And we had a 27.5% decrease this last year, but we scored a level 4 out of 5 on our three-year average, which is 55.5%. <clears throat> Academic achievement, um, proficiency made large gains for three years and then had a 23.3% drop this last year. Um, despite the drop, they're still performing 12.5% above the state average, which sits at 42% right now. Um, so there was a level 4 out of 5 rating um, on the three-year average. This is what it looks like by grade level. I, again, I pulled some unofficial data. You can see third, fourth, and fifth are all performing above the state average. Fourth was 5% away from meeting the state goal, which was 80%. Um, sixth was the lowest grade level, but you can see, again, we're dealing with really small groups here, which is really why they report that as unofficial data. Are so small. Um, by cohort, fourth grade had a 25% decrease from last year, but they're still well above the state average, and they're almost at the state goal of 80%. Fifth grade dropped by 50%, but still performing above the state average. <clears throat> Sixth grade was kind of up and down over the last four years. They had a decrease last year, but it's a three-kid group. So when you look at all of those cohorts, we see a decrease over the last year. Um, and but all but one grade level is still performing above the state average. And by grade level, we have third grade. Um, grade level had an increase in proficiency for three years up to 100%, followed by a drop to 60%. Fourth grade was similar to third, had an increase over three years all the way up to 100%, and then dropped down to 75 Fifth had, again, an increase over three years to 80, and then a drop to 50. And the sixth grade group's missing a lot of data, but it was the highest performing sixth grade group so far. So, so when you look at this and you see that last year, all you know three grades in a row had a significant drop, um, you know, what do you start correlating that <clears> to? <throat> Well, it's totally different groups of kids. So that's the first thing I think of. So it could just, you know, we're also looking at really small groups of kids here. Um, but I mean, as far, I would just, I'm just looking at the data here. There would have to be more insight into, like, sort of, you know, the teacher and the curriculum and the students. And I don't know a lot about that portion of it. Um, if you'd like that, yeah, go through that. Something. This will apply to Fremont when you get to them as well. When you look at a trend where you're not seeing growth in a cohort group or across those grade levels, you need to start evaluating your math curriculum, mm -hmm. which is what we're doing right now, and trying to decide um, if if the math curriculum we have is meeting the needs of our students, and we're really questioning that. We have for a couple of years um, and budgeted some money last year to, to look at curriculum. We were kind of waiting for the adoption year, but we don't really think we can. So. Um, and then you look at professional development and see which of your new teachers need additional training or which is which of your teachers maybe are struggling, but your class sizes certainly don't help. So those three factors is what I would look at as an administrator. So, Corey, that kind of goes to the crux of the question I ask almost every year. I don't know if you ever hear it every year. Is documenting 
the changes that we have in our schools from adopting avid major turnover of teachers, um, new math curriculum, or any curriculum essentially, or um, maybe there's something else that occurs outside that influences our school, whatever that may be. Documenting that to see if there's something that starts pointing the finger of why that particular year there was a drop. Right. And, I mean, it's going to be pretty interesting when we get to DMS talking about math because I think we've had a lot of turnover in our math department in like, the last three years. Is that right? So, has there been a true correlation? Um, that would be good for more pain. They were rated on the report card for math for academic growth as well. Um, there were some slight decreases in growth over the last three years, but they were at the state goal of 60% in 16-17, not too far from it in 17-18. There was a 4% decrease last year. They got a 3 out of 5 rating based on the three-year average and were 1% away from bumping up to a level 4. Um, academic achievement, 18-19 was the lowest scoring year. However, the scores have maintained um, pretty well over the last four years. There's a 9.8% difference between the highest and lowest scores. Last year's score of 42.7% is the same as the state average for the most part. Um, they were a level three out of five on the three-year average. Here they are by grade level. Um, six is performing at, above the state average. Uh, third is right at the state average. And fourth and fifth were below the state average this year. Um, for cohorts, uh, fourth grade had a 12.7% decrease between their two testing years. Fifth has um, had a decrease over the last three years. Sixth had a decrease for the first three years and then a 13% increase this last year. <clears throat> and we can look at it by grade level. So Third grade, 18-19 um, was the lowest performing third grade group. Otherwise, the other groups were within 8.5% of each other in the 50th percentile for the most part. Uh, fourth grade, 18-19 um, was, um, was again the lowest group. The first three groups maintained in the 50th percentile, but we have seen lower performance in the last two years. Uh, fifth grade, similar, fourth um, you see the groups improve over time in the first three years and then start to drop over the last two years with the lowest group in 18-19. And then six was up and down over the last four years, but unlike the other grade levels, they had their highest performing group in 18-19. So with the exception of six, um, trend is lowest performing group in 18-19 and drop in performance in the last two years. Brings us to the middle school. Academic growth um, increased over the last three years. A notable jump between 16, 17, 17, 18. Got a level three out of five for growth. Um, we were 12% away from the state goal, 60%. Academic achievement, we had a real notable drop in 16, 17, um, but otherwise the scores have maintained in the 40th percentile. Last year was the highest performing year by just a bit. Um, we were above the state average by 5%. Got a level three out of five rating off of last year's scores. This is seventh and eighth lumped together. Um, here it is by grade level. You can see those two grade levels are performing similarly. Uh, five and a half percent difference. Seventh was almost six percent above the state average, and eighth was right at the state average. So looking at that seventh grade group, um, it had a 7.4% drop between their fifth and sixth grade year. They gained some ground last year back up to 40 46%. But really, their scores have maintained in the 40th percentile. And the eighth grade group. Can we jump back? Yeah. Question? The math curriculum that we adopted in the high school, that's or in the middle school, that's been a couple of years now. Three years? Four years? Four years? Four years? Four years? Um, they had their, their lowest performing year last year, but their scores have also maintained for the most part in the 40th percentile. So when I look at that, I see both grade levels are performing at roughly the same level. Um, if you average their scores, they're almost the same. 
So the trend to me would be maintenance in the 40th percentile range. This is the grade level. Um, seventh grade has been up and down. The highest performing groups have been in the last two years. Eighth grade has also been up and down for three years and then increased performance over the last three years. And then we go to high school. Back to yeah. that last slide. Um, I guess to finish that thought, it was like three or four years ago when we adopted that math curriculum. But then at the same time, that we adopted it down through the grade school level two, I think. It seemed like it went, they were starting to get, what was it? It was that whole math where they were getting some exposure to the the, the upcoming stuff, but there was a focus on okay, here's the core principles we're trying to teach you, but then we're going to throw in a little bit more. Is that am I on the right track here? I'm not quite following you. So, I, if I, I remember right, maybe I'm wrong. Um, the, the middle school at uh, DMS decided to go with the sixth grade and they adopted the same curriculum. Mm -hmm. And then K to five did one. That's correct. Yeah. And so I think maybe that's what you're. Yeah, in thinking. the curriculum, though, it seemed like there's a little more exposure to the upper levels yeah. of what they were going to see in the coming years. Um, so you know how, like algebra, you didn't do anything with algebra until you were in algebra. Now, in the math classes, well, and you have a little bit of exposure here and there. I can't remember what they call it. The mm -hmm. weird way that they do math compared to how we learned how to do math. Common core, common core, that. I guess my, my point yeah, so is to see the exposure in the, in the grade school levels and having some consistency through that is starting. We're starting to see coming into the middle school level more prepared. So we're a continual, I guess, an increase in comprehension well, I, versus I think when we going from one. That, Versus going from one type of learning to jumping to a whole different yeah, program. So I think Logan was a sixth grader. Yeah, we really beefed up the collaboration between sixth and seventh grade. But I think that's a show. I didn't say that right, but I think there, I think there's some correlation there where they were coordinated. Okay, right, sorry. Um, high school. You also know that this is my favorite. Presentation all year long. Academic achievement for the high school. So we're looking at the level creators here. Um, we were seeing decreased achievement for the um, for three years, and then we had a twenty four and a half percent increase this last year for our highest performance yet. We got a level three out of five on last year's scores, which were forty four point two percent. When you look at that eleventh grade level, you can see they reversed a trend of decreased performance. Um, but I want to point out, we, we could be looking at a high achieving class here in 1890 because they also scored the highest ELA results we'd ever had, you know, so just, just a point, but um, did really good. The less that. grade class this year will not score <laughs> <laughs> like the senior. Okay. When is this test given? This was 1819 mm -hmm. in April this year. Maybe there's some correlation with our winter. 1819, it was a nasty spring, wet, snowy, cold. Kids were inside studying. 1718 was nice and warm. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't snow on the ground. <laughs> That's all I have. Any questions, folks? What's that? It's over. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, this year I had Mrs. Smith teaching a math, uh, for lack of a better word, intervention class. And so it's kind of like a double dip. And she's she's loving it and meeting it up. And the kids are we're actually seeing the kids. Um, math is no longer a four-letter word to them. They're getting excited. They're getting that exposure. They're getting a little bit of extra rep repetition. I'm curious to see as long as one of the teacher numbers and the class numbers and everything work, that we continue to keep that class because those are the kids you want to catch. Those are the kids that are, a lot of them are out of two and they need to just answer four or five questions to make it a three, a passing score type of thing. So I'm excited with that piece right there. And then I also think that the last two years I've been here, 
um, we've shared with the elementary school, um, can't think of her name right now, sweet lady that comes once a month. Janice Heigl. And, no, you're talking about me. No, <laughs> no, no, no. You don't share, okay? You don't share. <laughs> if anybody wants to know, she doesn't share. Right. Anyway, with Janice Heigl coming and working with my math teachers, um, she's been able to do some neat things and, and help me reinforce some things. Sometimes it's better hearing from somebody besides your boss, hey, you should be trying doing this. And she already had an idea prior to with, with working with me last year, and she's had to nudge me to do a couple things that I'm not a big fan of. But the nudging's been good because I know sometimes that's what's best, even though I'm old school. And I think between the use of Janice Heigl and the professional development we've been able to use with her and being able to have Mrs. Smith teach those kids, I think we'll continue to see those numbers grow. It could be because it's wet and cold outside. Uh, it, it, could cold. Be. it could be. Never underestimate the weather. I don't think that this 11th grade class academically is as strong as the current seniors. Oh, you're not giving them enough credit. I see where Logan's GPA is and where he's ranked within the class, and it's a pretty weak class. But I mean, that's not the school's fault. It's just. The way it is. And, and that's one of the problems with comparing <laughs> apples to oranges, too. But yeah. we look at our data, it makes a good conversation, um, and sometimes reflection and conversation is the best professional development. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, here we go with the annual Division 22 report. I sent you an email to Hillary Beatham over and do your homework before you came tonight, so I somebody might have already had an education meeting it all to you. These are based on all your policies, and of course, we keep the policies up to date. I reviewed all of them, maybe compared them to the policies, and also, you know, uh, reviewed our programs as far as if we're in compliance or not. This is supposed to be, you know, an oral report to the public, and, and I can say this, I went through each and one of them, and District 7 is in compliance uh, with each and one of these standards. Uh, we had some talk about TAG a while back. We do have all the TAG policies in place. I think I'm saying this for your benefit, you brought it, you brought it up. But, uh, our TAG coordinator, you know, recently resigned, so we're thinking about how we're going to rebuild TAG to the policies and uh, be a conversation the principal is going to be having so uh, as far as how it looks and how it's going to change everything. So it would be a, a forward report for that. Because I know you had a question about that one. There's about three standards that they're going to be to tag. Yeah, it seems like ages ago. Yeah. I don't know what to talk about. Everything else, but I didn't forget that. So I can. Uh, I can honestly truly say that uh, Lake County School District number 7 is in compliance with the 2022 standards uh, for the Oregon Department of Education. Uh, once you have questions, uh, we need an official motion to enter in the minutes so I can submit this to the Oregon Department of Education. So. Okay. I move to approve the 2018 Division 22 standards. Report to the community as presented. Second. It's been moved to approve the 1920 Division 22 standards. Report to the community. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Pass the minutes. And we know. We know. 9.24 declares Superintendent Division vacant. Are you sure you really have to do that? <laughs> so according to your last board meeting, <laughs> you guys accepted Mr. Gay's resignation, or retirement, I should say, better better suited. Um, sorry. I'm going to have this table move before it's over with tonight. I'm very thick skin. That's good. That's good. <laughs> 
Um, anyway, uh, uh, the last board meeting, we um, you guys accepted uh, the retirement of Mr. Kangle from the superintendent position, as well as hired an outside um, OSBA firm uh, to do a superintendent search. So with that, we need to declare the vacant the position as vacant effective July of 2021, so that they can um, go ahead and, and post the position for us. I move to approve the superintendent position vacant effective July 1, 2020, as for Senate. Second. Okay. Seconded to declare the superintendent position vacant effective July 1, 2020. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Pass the amendment. 9.3. So the next order of business in the superintendent uh, search uh, is a proposed work calendar. Um, as I mentioned before the meeting um, to you folks, is that between January 15th, officially, um, and February 12th, we needed to stay on a, a pretty tight schedule. Um, so far we have, and I do want to say that I apologize for posting on, having Tandy post on Facebook on my behalf for me yesterday, um, that there will be a parent meeting uh, on the 6th of February in the cafeteria at 530, um, plus the online uh, survey that's already been posted up on our, our website. I apologize that I did not give you the heads up on that. It's my bad totally oversight on my part so first and foremost I apologize um, but there's going to be several meetings between the 6th and the 7th just to kind of go over this a little bit um, I have it scheduled out for a two o'clock um, with Miss Mize with our student leaders leadership class um, beginning at 2 and then following that about 3 uh, 15 or so as soon as uh, staff can um, get to the to the uh, cafeteria at the high school, excuse me, um, certified both, certified and the classified staff at about 315, they're, they're close by. Immediately following that meeting will be um, union representatives um, for both certified and the classified. They both agreed that they were totally happy with meeting as one, um, representing their union. Uh, then, then, of course, at 530, parents um, and key communicators Basically, the community is invited to, to the cafeteria uh, to discuss. Now, all of these meetings are totally directed by the OSBA representatives. Um, there will be none of administrators there um, until we get called to our meeting. We can not have them display um, here at 830. And then they'll also be with the confidential staff, which is uh, Tammy and Amy and Patty. Um, they'll meet with him the meeting the following, and then they'll meet with Mr. Cahill after that. Um, and so, just to give you a highlight, that's kind of where we are at with that. At your February 12th board meeting, um, they'll, they'll, they'll put together the, the online survey, what they gather from the public, from staff, et cetera, et cetera, and discuss all those qualifications with uh, you guys as a board, you will approve them um, or make no, you know, adjust, etc. Um, they will also present a salary comparison information, which we did a lot of revamp on that in the past year, and so I sent them what I got on file um, at this very moment. And so they are going to do life and quality as far as school district size lives and that sort of thing, which we kind of did that when we revamped that in the first place. However, um, it'll be good to have them look at it and make sure that we're semi-close, need to adjust, etc. And then, of course, they'll, you guys will have to adopt a salary range for the position for posting. They'll immediately start doing um, uh, the posting for the position based on all that material. Now, anything after the 12th of February, is up for negotiation, if you will. <laughs> um, they understand that the dates will change um, just because of um, quorum, those kinds of things, um, availability of the board members and or interview committees, however that plays out going forward. So this is just after the 12th of February, just mainly 
you know, a, a guideline to go by. Um, before the meeting, we discussed submitting dates that you are unavailable for sure that you know about. I have Corey's list, and then if you guys did get that sent to me, then we can start rearranging calendars again. Can I turn this on? So, budget season is around the corner. And I know that last year we were hard to forms too because the end of the school year it was really busy and we talked about helping that up a little bit. We're all, I know, but we're <laughs> struggling dates and getting everyone together. Basically, this, think, this, basically not, this stuff, sorry, not to interrupt you, but this um, stuff I expect to be wrapped up for the most part in April, by the end of April. I may have to push out till May, first part of May. On I'm day. just throwing it out there for dates. If we're looking all the way this long to be maybe in the next 30 days or so, we have more dates to look at so that everybody can try their best. Well, so so my thought process is, is if you all can get me your dates that you're unavailable for this especially, then I can build the budget calendar because I know I knew this was coming down, so I kind of stalled doing my budget calendar waiting because this is a little bit important as well, and we need to make sure that this is in place. Um, so if we the sooner the better, you guys all get me that, then we can start rambling dates around. So. In this packet, do we have the times that you were rattling off earlier for the 6th no. and the 7th? Okay. I did not. I can send you those um, uh, dates and or the times on those two dates. Are we supposed to be there at like, the confidential? So it's kind of that? a, so the, the idea is, is to not have administrators, board members there, so that staff will actually. You don't need us there. Let us know. Right, so what they'll okay. do is they'll gather through all these groups, come back and say, okay, this is what we gathered. What's your input and where do we go? What do we need to have it's in here? Similar to how we gathered a bunch of information on Mr. Cahill on the interim phase. We did a big, but they're doing it. They're running it. They're doing very, it. very, very similar on compiling from different. Correct. Touches. So they'll be in town on the four to six, they have stuff. We have a gentleman that will be here the 6th and the 7th. Um, Barry and I are actually going out to the Bonds um, seminar uh, on the 7th, and uh, I'm me meeting with that guy up there um, since I won't be down here. Yes. See. Yeah, there's two gentlemen getting this. So this is great, and you guys will get Mike Taylor. <laughs> Not sure if Mike Taylor, <laughs> this other Mike Taylor. <laughs> so the 12th, will they be in town on the 12th? Yes, then? they will be here. At our board meeting. They will be at your board meeting. So really we just need to adopt the calendar knowing that after the 12th, it could change. But we definitely have to stay on track till the 12th. <laughs> yeah. And that's probably why I prematurely put out the, the um, deal on the Facebook was because I'd get nervous about the time frame and getting stuff back. So you did say though that would be on the sixth and I guess I'd say that I could participate in the community meetings representing our as position parents. as a parent. As a parent. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. You are more than so yes. we will have our opportunity on the twelfth to discuss as a our board. Position okay, so Correct. I was confused when yes. I got so, that to my email. I thought we needed to be there to represent mm -hmm. the board. No, mm -hmm. so you need to be, okay. you know, need to kind of take that and go as a parent in that that That's good. position. Yeah. Which helps the rest. Yeah. So is that the, can I ask a question? <laughs> um, is that the, she always gives me that look. You know? <laughs> So is that the same for any of our staff that has that's a parent in our that's district? Good. They yeah. can go to the staff, but then they can do a parent. They could do the parent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They just need to make sure that which hat that they're they better for. be using the parent hat <laughs> yeah. versus. But as a teacher, right, we need this or okay. that or the other. But as a parent, we're looking for this, that, or the other. So that's the key: is just okay. which hat which hat they have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
so I know we sent that out. That's on our Facebook page. It's on our school website. Um, yep. Just wondering if we can highlight that in the paper on it February. Is. Yeah. It already is. is. As far as I know, it went in today's. I don't think we made it to today's paper. I can't. I don't I think we made it for today's paper, to be honest, but because I was working with Tilly I commercially. I think, I, if not today, then it's going to be next week. It'll be Wednesday, but then also in the Wise Buys and also in the Lowdown. And Excellent. then um, the 4th and the 5th will shoot a um, school messenger. Though I want to say, I think it did make Maybe Might have made it. My, it was close, but I think we did make it in. Well, good job to you, because I was severely late. Any idea about our reader board? Let's put it on our reader board, Jim. Oh. I could call them and they're not going to do that. I forgot all about the reader board over there. It's the school event. Yeah. Right. yeah. I forgot about that thing down there. <laughs> I, will, I will call my friend Ronnie Bo and tell him to put it up there. Any other questions or comments on the superintendent search calendar? I guess just to highlight that up until February 12th, kind of set in stone. After that, it's going to be fluid. I move to approve the adoption of the superintendent search calendar as presented. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to adopt the superintendent search calendar as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion is passed. 9.4 ILC. Okay, so um, I've been working for the past year uh, with PCC in developing this. This MOU originally um, was signed by Mr. Gallagher um, and Dr. Gutierrez, um, and it was very broad and it was very wide open um, with not a lot of terms uh, to it. Um, so Dr. Gutierrez um, did agree that we needed to kind of tighten up some of the the usage or the usage over at the ILC KCC building. Um, so what we did is uh, we agreed to a five-year term, um, which can be a renewable term very easily, along with um, any sort of termination, um, but it must be in writing in a minimum of six months advance notice. Um, keeping in mind that it would need to be on the end of a term, so you're not cutting anybody off um, with that's taking KCC classes. Um, and that goes both ends, on their end and on our end. Um, so that was never an option um, in our last one. Uh, so we uh, put that in there. The physical space, um, for the most part, they occupy the main floor. However, we do uh, have one room, which is called the step-up room, the alternative education room. Um, we do have that room and some uh, following areas that are shared, so hallways, all the entrances, and the restrooms, the newly designed restrooms over there. Um, any remodeling and additions? So, Lake County School District, we manage the grant funding for any construction or contracting and project management of the ILC. However, we will coordinate with KCC and with the ILC so that it's in the best interest of everybody. So not only them, but as well as us thinking down the line, etc. Technology advances means that it's mostly on them um, in their classrooms. They will be the coordinators of that, um, along with working with Evan and our tech department, not to interrupt what we have going on already. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, up here, sorry. Um, in the event of uh, any, they bring in new hardware or furniture or, in, or fixtures, KCC will surplus, but we will have the right to that surplus property. So that also includes computers, monitors, keyboards, and associated technology or equipment. They go through theirs uh, a little bit more rapid than we do. I think they're on a three-year um, with their computers and, and that sort of thing, uh, turnover on that. So we we put in, in a writing that we could get the surplus hardware from them should, should they terminate the agreement. 
um, or should we to terminate that agreement? Um, in the past, we've had custodial and maintenance issues. Not so much the maintenance, but the custodial more so. Um, else, uh, Lake County School District was taking most of that burden on as for the custodial piece. So not only were we taking our, our own step-up facilities, but we were making sure that um, KCC was kind of clean too on their areas. Um, I, we did compromise to ILC needed to have their own custodial because we do not have we just don't have the time or the capacity to do theirs, theirs as well. We get doing ours, but not all of theirs. So we kind of share in the um, shared spaces. However, we just do our KC, uh, excuse me, our step up room, and they need to take care of their rooms for custodial maintenance. Generally, falls on us in the first place. Um, those guys are there, and they know those buildings anyway. Um, that's kind of our responsibility to take care of any maintenance issues anyway. Um, and basically just have effective communication um, between custodial and maintenance crew to um, address any maintenance and safety issues, um, which has come, uh, we've had a couple of times um, not knowing. So, um, Cheryl Lanero is um, uh, the person in charge over there. Of course, Chip Massey is um, the executive director that's working on behalf of Dr. Gutierrez. Um, I did have um, Jeff look over the con or the MOU. They had their lawyers look over the MOU. Um, we felt pretty comfortable um, with establishing a few guidelines with them on both ends. So I guess I'm asking that we get their approval on the MOU. And I appreciate this is uh, this covers everything will still be flexible. So both parties are really showing good faith with what they're doing here. It's mostly just making sure people are talking and remembering to talk to each other. If there's a leaky pipe or something going on, one of their things they need to tell us about it. That's kind of something that didn't happen. So we're just we're a little more formal, but we aren't losing that partnership. So they've been a good partner. We just need to make sure the partners talk to each other. So that's what this does without hamstringing anybody. So. It's my recommendation from a legal standpoint that this, I think, adequately protects both sides, and especially us. Right. I'm going to approve the ILC and LC SD7 memorandum of understanding as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the ILC LC SD7 memorandum of understanding as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion's passed. In consent agenda. I'm a little bit worried about that volunteer. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Annie, you can approve all of the consent agenda and just abstain from 10.5. Okay. I'm going to approve that. I got to abstain completely. I'm going to approve, yeah. <laughs> 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 approve you, the consent agenda. That's fine. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passed. Yeah, you should announce your abstaining. I have no announced your abstaining. I abstain. Uh, I want to abstain. Sorry, I have 11. Now it's been done tonight. Okay. Well, next board meeting agenda item. Let's try to hold the policies. So, oh, so we're going to hand out the healthy team um, survey to you guys. You asked um, last year to have it for some time, so we're going to give you a month. Is that sufficient? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And so it's a little bit different this year. And so this is the survey, and the other packet is what they sent us on how to navigate through the report and to look at that. Um, and then next year, so this year we're not going to be completing the survey in our schools because they're redoing the two surveys. So every every other year we do a different survey. So one year it could be Oregon Healthy Team, the next year it's Oregon Wellness. And they're putting them together so then in the um, 2021 school year those um, uh, surveys will be together and then um, we'll start doing them again every year. So we won't have this for next year. So we're going to have the healthy, we're going to go over this on, the on March 11th. Is it March 11th? Yeah. yeah. It's a okay. meeting. Um, I'm always available if you guys have questions this month if you need to. 
you know, if you want to ask me anything there. Are you opening your door? They're really being needed. I don't know how often I forget your opening. Sorry. So the next board meeting will have the consultants, OSBA. Yes. Yeah. yeah, a major part of our meeting. So, so why is March 11th? Is that right? Yeah. It's our March 11th. Yeah. 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 March 11th. Yeah. So for the 12th, though, I guess my question is, depending on how long they think they need, we may want to look at balancing with the policies. Sure. Depending on so there's an over very nice. Yeah, because we can approve the batch one from tonight. Easy peasy at that meeting, but we can always bump batch two to a more appropriate meeting if those guys need that time. If that's that what you're saying? So don't look at me. You're not going to be here on the 12th. Nope, she's not. Sunny. 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 Probably not. Yeah, for so maybe what we ought to do, not to get too far down the weeds at this meeting, but um, maybe Janet, since those people are coming on the 12th, that you could get some idea of what they're going to ask and then get that to Corey, or we can get it at the 12th and then see if we can get, it, yeah. get it in at some time around the 12th. It might be the 12th. When I talked to them today, they were running the pre tight time frame between mm -hmm. now and then so it might be the 12th uh quarry um but we have till about the 17th to make any adjustments because that's okay kind of when they're well, willing to and post that if i even you know afterwards if i get it because i'll be home that friday okay um i just don't think i'm going to tour a huge dairy and then i'm probably gonna have to go to dinner with these people but. so yeah why don't so we I'm, just take a extra note packet or whatever and then maybe I can scan it to you and then or you know email it to you and yeah. any somewhere well and I'll have either my laptop or my iPad okay. so I can Just look at it. it yeah and then you can give me get back to well and I'm going to try and go to the parent meeting yeah just so I kind of see what's what's happening floating around out there yeah yeah so I guess with that information Darwin and Randy, will you be here on the 12th? I'll just make sure I'm here. Okay. So make sure I have a couple I think Barry will be here because I'm pretty sure we had a pre meeting. I was on that. And he was pretty solid on all the dates. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we want to get as many as possible, not just mm -hmm. the bare quorum. Yeah. You're all very critical to this. Okay, so anything else for the next board? Well, meeting? yeah, an interesting thing that we propose uh, uh, trap club. It's really a trap shoot. It's really catching a lot of cases. Backed it up. Mr. Rose has done a lot of homework on it. There's a local individual here, Mr. Nate McCarty, who's really brought it to us. And we're joining the North Lake of Paisley because <laughs> trap club is up in Paisley. And so, uh, I think it's kind of a nice, interesting deal opportunity for our youth. So. Will be, will be presenting that and uh, have our consultants. That's for us. The we're on to number 13. I will be attending the meeting. <laughs> Second. Without hesitation. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>